And finally, I'd like to introduce our amazing faculty and presenters for today. Um, we have Peter Rod, Andrea Fierchuk, and Sonia Siebert, who will take you through what Niagara College has to offer. Okay, that, that's a great feat to do everything that Niagara College has to offer. Um, there's so much that Niagara College can offer, but I'm gonna focus more so on the distilling world and what we can offer here. There is a lot that we can do. And um, it's really cool because it's one of the only kind of, it's one of its kind in the entire world. We are the artisan distilling program. We have a physical distillery on site. We have a head distiller who works intimately with you. Uh, teaches you how to make everything from vodka to gin to tequila to rum. Um, and you get to spend a full day distilling once a week, which is an incredible opportunity. Distilling is one of these rare trades that never really developed a lot of um, actual formal training. Historically, it was taught over in, in the UK, uh, taught from generation to generation. And a few years ago, Niagara College actually decided to be entrepreneurs and start Canada's very first and one of the only of its kind in the entire world where you can actually come in and learn how to distill. Not only are you learning how to still you distill, you are also learning the business side of it. You're learning the tasting side of it. Um, and there is so much that we go through in such a short span of time. So it is a very exciting, only eight month program. And we try and equip you guys as students or possible students in the future, which is much with as much as we can. So um, I'm going to actually start off with the question here is, do you have a passion for spirits and an interest in the expanding craft distilling industry? That's all you need to join the course. And you also need the requirements, but a lot of times we get a lot of people who are hesitant to actually you know, take that jump and register themselves because they're intimidated by other people who might know so much more than they do. And uh, I'm gonna let Sonia kind of jump in here if she has anything to say. Sonia is a, one of our lovely professors who um, I'll let introduce herself a little bit more in the future when we get to things. But Sonia, what kind of students do we get at the, at the college in, in artisan distilling? Oh, we get students from around the world and they bring so much knowledge uh, from their, their culture to the course and they apply that knowledge, that knowledge and that culture and they put it into the product that they're making, their spirits that they're making and they share their knowledge with the, their other classmates. And it's really interactive and really exciting to see. It's, it's really cool. And one of my favorite things that people always ask me, they're like, is it super male dominated? And uh, we have Emma Cuthbert here, who's gonna talk to you guys a little bit later, who just graduated in a program. But Sonia, what was the numbers of males to females in Emma's group? Oh, I think that we, the girls outnumbered the guys. Yeah. I think we did really well that way. And uh, yeah, no, it's a, it's a diverse group. Um, everyone is welcome to take the program and everyone learns and shares their knowledge. It doesn't matter. For sure. It, like, it, it's quite cool because it was 75% female, I would say, in that last cohort that just graduated. Um, and furthermore, a lot of people think that we have people who have so much experience and don't get me wrong, we get great bartenders who are coming out, uh, mixologists, we have people who've worked at distilleries before, but Sonia, do we have people who come out and literally just want are here to learn and, and meet the requirements and are eager and maybe it's their second career? You know, that's the nice part about the program is that we have such a diverse population of students. Some of them do have that knowledge and they bring it and they share it. And then some of them don't have any knowledge and they come with just a passion for making spirits and an interest in the distilling, in, distilling industry. And those students, you know, with the vast knowledge and the ones with the limited knowledge share and gel together. And everyone walks away with, with a great deal of knowledge about spirits and, and the spirit industry. So it's very diverse that way. And we've been very successful with sharing our knowledge. It, it's really cool to see, like last term, we had a, a, a milk lab tech who is actually now working at an Ontario, uh, uh, I guess it's a, it's a kind of a milk distillery. But the thing is, is that everybody comes in and he's suddenly explaining things that he did from his background. You have other people who have started business and they're talking about trademarking laws and you come together and it's a really cool environment because at the end of the day, everybody just wants to see everyone else succeed as well. So this is, this is one of my favorite things about, about the program is to see the diverse group that we have. Um, for everybody is welcome. Um, what, who meet the requirements? I should also add that, but don't never be intimidated. And it's just about putting your be best foot forward and soaking up as much as you can. So uh, let's go to the next slide and we'll continue on a little bit more about this. 
Um, so there's one other thing that I always have to talk about when it comes to this program is that it says one year, it's eight months. It is eight months of intense uh, learning about so many different facets of the industry. And after eight months, you will have a great uh, firm knowledge of the industry and how it works. Sonia, is this person going to know everything under the sun <laughs> when they graduate? You'd like to think so, but no, they're not. Some of this stuff they're going to learn by trial and error, depending on where they go, but they're going to have a really good foundational knowledge of the distilling and how to make spirits that they're going to be okay as they move forward. It's a crash course, you know, and the thing is that if you have a question in particular about certain field, you can always ask us and we can try and, and build on what it is. But in eight months, we just try and give you as much knowledge as possible in a very short span of time and prepare you for a career in this, if this is really what you want. And uh, we've got a whole list of all the different grads and it's incredible to see people who are walking away, uh, starting their own distillery, joining other existing distilleries and, and so forth, going into sales maybe as well. And it's a, it's a great variety of careers that you can go into after this. So it's uh, it's a, it's an eight month crash course, get ready, get excited and uh, be ready to really throw yourself into it. That's, that's really it about it, um, this slide. So let's keep on going to the next slide. So there's a picture of me. Um, I am the program coordinator and the professor for the Artists of Distilling program. A little bit more about me is that I'm actually a grad of Niagara College. I went through the Wine and Vit program who the program coordinator that is Peter Rod, who's still here, who's here with us right now. So I actually went through that program. I ended up moving to the UK. I did an MBA focusing on wine with an MW and a master of wine over there. After that, I was taking uh, certain qualifications like WSAT. I would win global uh, tasting competitions and that's where it actually led me to working for LVMH in Moet Hennessy in the UK. So that was working for brands like Belvedere Vodka, Hennessy Cognac, um, Glen Morangy, Ardbeg Distillery, some, some really cool distilleries. And I was working in sales and marketing and I missed distilling so much. So I ended up actually moving over to what I would argue is the world's largest gin farm. And what a gin farm is, is, is people would come to us with concepts and we would help them to develop recipes and, and their brand. And we would export everything from high, you know, 63% oak aged gin to the Japanese market, to blue gin, to the Spanish market. And uh, I got to learn how to make so many different cool gins. And when I missed home, I, I moved back here and somehow this, this position came on and I, I, couldn't, I couldn't not come home. So here I am uh, many years later, returning back to Niagara College because the thing that I love about this college is that it's such an incredible community that once you join it, you never leave. And um, I feel that I'm very privileged to be here. So I hope that you all at home can come and join us here at the college. So that's a bit about me. Uh, David Dixon is a former head distiller at Dylan's Distillery. Uh, Jacqueline also uh, has experience at, at Dylan's Distillery and works some co amazing contract work. And then I'll let Sonia introduce herself. <laughs> uh, thank you, Andrea. Uh, Sonia Siebert, I'm one of the professors in the course. I teach the legal and regulatory environment. I've um, come from a very di diverse background. I'm 31 years as an Ontario Provincial Police Officer. And uh, I've spent the last 17 years of that career working for the Alcohol and Gaming Commission, the, regula the regulator for the alcohol industry. So in my um, course of duties, I would go out and talk to the wine, the brewery, the distillery, and talk to them about regulatory, keeping themselves um, operating within the law and assisting them in any way I can. So in, a, in my course, we're gonna talk about how you get your license to get a distillery up and running. What are some of the requirements and some of the legalities around doing that? So I welcome you to come. It's a good challenge. And when you walk away, you'll have a business case done that you'll be able to go and take and get your licenses to open that distillery. Which is always a big challenge. <laughs> That's what everybody wants to know. Yes. So we're very grateful for Sonia's <laughs> course. All right, let's go to the next slide. Um, okay, so here's just a few highlights about uh, the program, but you know what, instead of going into this too much, what I'd actually like to do is, is, is uh, jump ahead so we can actually go course by course, Sonia and I can go course by course and 
kind of talk about the actual courses that we go through. So um, distillery operations is a very cool course because you actually get to learn how distillery operates. What is the equipment? Um, you know, how, how does distilling happen? What's the difference between double and triple distilling? You know, what's the difference between continuous and, and batch distilling? So we go through all of those different steps. Um, distillation science is a course that our head distiller, David, actually teaches, and it goes everything from yeast uh, to uh, fermentation and all the, these kinds of fun things. Practical distilling is always a favorite among students because it's that day where you get to go in and physically distill. Uh, introduction to sensory analysis is, is one of my babies that I love to teach because we taste through everything from tequila to mezcal to gin to vodka, liqueurs, RTDs, everything. And you learn to evaluate them. We use the WSET uh, format for this. So if you want to continue on after this program and do other cert certifications, you're more than welcome to, and you'll have the knowledge on how to do that. So that's very important for us in sensory analysis. And then there's legal and regulatory environment, which Sonia already touched on anything that you wanted to add on to that. No, nope, that's pretty good. <laughs> Yep. And then in our second term, we have quality control, uh, quantitative spirit analysis, uh, practical distilling, capstone, and distillation management. So a few of the highlights of the second term that I did want to go through is the capstone project. And this is a big uh, highlight for a lot of students. I'm sure Emma might mention this in her little chat at the end, is the opportunity for you and some of your fellow students to make a project that is just yours. Everything from grain to glass, uh, discuss, you know, uh, what you want to do, how you want to do this. You do this all in the distillery and this is your baby. And at the end of the day, you actually get to see it on the shelves and see people come in and buy it. And Emma made the most incredible gin, which I'm sure she, she still loves. And um, it sold out really, really fast. And everybody said, oh, gin doesn't sell here. And she makes this incredible gin. And suddenly it's like, it's, it's pretty much gone like that. So that's capstone project where if you have a passion for one particular industry, we, we, one particular spirit, we're always happy to, you know, try and push the boundaries and make something a little bit different. We've had everything from smoked apple brandy to um, flavored gin. We've had, you know, what we call like bourbon style product products as well. We've had uh, a porter liqueur mash, which was really interesting recently as well. So uh, the sky's the limit with these kinds of things. As long as David gives you the thumbs up, that's the real challenge to make sure David, our distiller, is on board with you. Um, but that is a, a really cool thing that we do within the program. Another thing that I did want to highlight, something we started recently in distillation management, is actually our, our virtual portfolio. And what this is, is we are taking elements from every single pro, every single course that you're taking, and we are actually encouraging you to put everything together. So for example, you'll take Sonia's business plan and you'll put that into your portfolio. You'll take a gin recipe that we do during sensory analysis and you'll put that in your portfolio. And then at the end during distillation management, you actually have all these different elements from every single course that you present. And it's a little bit about yourself and you talk about your distilling, uh, your distilling uh, methods and your, your attitude towards distilling. And whether you go on and you start your own distillery or you go on and you wanna go for a job interview, we've had students really uh, say that this is one of the best things because you come here for applicable knowledge and you graduate and you have this, this virtual portfolio you can always reference back to and say, oh, what's, what about that fermentation um, graph? What did that look like? And you can go back and say, oh, I remember it's in this portfolio, it's here for us. So that's one of my favorite things about distillation management. There's a lot of other highlights, but we only have so much time here. So we're just gonna keep on going to the next thing. So here's a bit more about the capstone project. Again, this is a student led project where you get into groups and you get to make a spirit that is of your choice, which is approved by our head distiller and the sky's the limit as long as you can get the approval. So um, usually a big highlight. And then, you know, sometimes I can go on to win awards too. So very exciting. Let's keep on going to the next one. And without further ado, we've talked a bit about Emma. She is a recent graduate of our program, and uh, we've invited her to talk a little bit about her experience in, in the artisan, artisan distilling program. So please, Emma. Well, thank <laughs> you so much, Andy. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Emma. Um, I recently graduated from the artisan distilling program in August, this past August. Um, and when when Andy said it was like a deep dive, you get right into it. She is not lying. It is um, pretty intense um, considering everything. You know, it's only an eight month program, but 
but the depth of learning and like the the understanding and the knowledge that you come out of this program with is unmatched to any other schooling that I've done especially in that short amount of time um and it's overall it's a really great experience um and you mentioned that uh for capstone myself and two of my classmates we made a flavored gin uh twisted berry gin go check it out at the uh niagara college wine store if you have a chance and if it's still there um but it's a really great opportunity to be able to uh, be creative and express yourself in in um, making a product like that and being able to influence every step, um, be it the recipe creation or, um, you know, what kind of flavorings you want to use. It's, it's, uh, it's really amazing. <laughs> I think there was a lot to go through, especially with Capstone Project. And, and Emma, um, it, can you talk about a little bit as well, how we talked about the business side? Like, so you were focused on, you were thinking about like, who is your target market and who are we selling to? So you actually, you actually did a business side to your capstone project as well. Yeah. So, um, there was a part of, uh, you know, like creating a product, you have to figure out who's going to buy your product and, you know, how are you going to market it and who are you going to market it to like the target markets? And uh, it takes a lot of understanding of what you're making and who's going to buy it in order to be able to present it in a way that, you know, it's actually going to sell. And uh, with my group, for example, we ended up having this initial target market. And then as the project um, kept moving forward, we ended up having to pivot. Andy's favorite word, <laughs> but we ended up having to pivot and change who we were marketing to, um, which still ended up being a success, but it's something that happens very often in the real world and being able to have an experience like that while still being in school, I feel had um, like provided me with better preparation for events like that. Yeah, for sure. And I think that's really what we, we as professors aim to do is give the students a taste of the real world. You know, it's great to make products, but if they don't sell, then there's really not a lot of point in it at the end. Um, and so we, we want to make sure that when you graduate, you understand all the different aspects of it. And there's a crash course and an expert for you here at Niagara College for every single aspect. And we try and really give you as much information as possible and equip you for the real real world for sure. So uh, thank you very much, Emma, for coming on board and uh, sharing your experiences with us. You'll hear from Emma a little bit later as well. <laughs> okay, so this is a where are they now little slide. And believe it or not, I act, so I put this together and I actually struggled to put this together because there's actually so many different graduates that being that we've only been in, in uh, been a program for three years, I think it was three years now. Um, this is this is incredible. The the impact and, and Sonia can comment on this as well. The impact the students are making in the in our industry is already noticeable, and I'm sure Sonia can attest to this. It's like you see the students graduate, and a month later, next week, they're full time already at a local distillery or you know moving halfway around the country and taking an amazing job on. Um, Sonia, any any of your hey. favorite things you want to talk about here? <laughs> This is the most exciting part is watching them land the job that they've wanted for a long time, the one that they went to school for and that they've studied so hard for. So it's really nice to see. And it's really nice as the classes we move forward, we go and visit some of these uh, distilleries in class trips and we get to see students that are successful. And they, in, in some cases, take us on that tour and guide us through it. And that's really exciting to see. And you can see them shine in in their role and, and be successful. And that's really inspiring for all of us. For sure. And then they'll come back and they'll say, you know what, I'm so glad I had this experience. It yes. really set me up. And that's the most rewarding for us as professors, to be honest with you. And I just heard back from another student who actually landed uh, a distilling role at, I think it's Tofino Distillery out in BC. 
And uh, for some of us, like living off the coast of Vancouver Island and surfing in Tofino and making like spirits, yeah. like that's the dream. And uh, I sit back and I'm like, wow, that's incredible. And, and these these students who are, who are passionate and are really excited about it, they're they're getting this done. So um, there are new distilleries that are opening up, I feel like almost every week, if not every month or every day for that matter. And there's so many spots that need to be filled. So not only do we have students who have um, graduated here in the last three years, got full-time jobs and are making an impact, suddenly they're also like getting promoted as well because it's such a young industry. And I also know of many students who are looking to, now that COVID's kind of dying down, they're looking to move overseas. And there's a lot of buzz about the program actually over in the UK because they don't have anything like this where you get hands-on experience. So we actually have some students who, who might study in the UK the theory and they'll come here and to learn the practical right afterwards. So it's, uh, it's cool to see us as making waves even though we're still so young. I find it very rewarding as I'm sure Sonia does as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And there's one even amongst this list, these are all students that have uh, landed jobs at places, but there's also students that have opened up their own distillery and man's distillery is being one of them. And then um, in, in turn, uh, a student is employed there. So yes. they're classmates and one's opened up the distillery and one's working for them. So that's pretty exciting to see too. Really cool to see. It's cool to see this impact and we're, we're, we're making waves. <laughs> so without further ado, um, I am going to th thank you very much, Sonia and Emma for your contribution. Uh, it was great impact. And I'm gonna throw this over to Peter now, who's gonna tell us all about the business beverage management program. Thank you, uh, Andrea. Thank you, Sonia. Nice to hear from you guys and Emma. Always love to hear the student stories. Um, so let's take a little shift, uh, move in a slightly different direction. We, we did an open house presentation earlier today uh, on the winery and viticulture two-year diploma program. Uh, we heard from Adrian Popovich, the program coordinator for the beverage, a part of the uh, brewery management uh, program, brewmaster brewery management program. And now we've just heard from the distilling experts. Uh, so what is beverage business management and where does it fit at Canadian Food and Wine Institute at Niagara College? Well, this is, I guess there's a couple of ways of looking at this. Uh, this comes after almost 15 years of the, the precursor to this course uh, program, which was called Wine Business Management. And uh, that program was created basically out of the demand uh, from the local wine industry. They, they were delighted to see the caliber of graduates coming from our winery program or winemaking program, but they weren't, uh, they, they had gaps, they had spaces they had to fill in sales, in marketing, uh, in retail, uh, in experience, uh, in data management, uh, in all of the, the other business aspects. And so this program was created as a kind of to fill that need. And certainly it did that. And the, the graduates of, of the wine business manage, management program were finding work uh, in the, the local industry and, and beyond. So what happened? Well, the industry's changed. Uh, you know, COVID aside and all of the impacts it's having and, and global climate change and all of the impacts it's having, the industry itself in, on, in Canada, in Ontario, in Canada and beyond is changing very dramatically. Um, and we're seeing um, wineries taking on, um, expanding their product lines and, and taking on other projects, uh, maybe getting into the brew business or getting into the cider business, maybe getting into the spirits business, et cetera. Uh, just to A, because of interest, because of reaching a broader audience and because of a bottom line. And frankly, it's, it's, uh, it's hard to make money. You know, as we say, you've got to start with a million uh, or start with 10 million. If you want to make a million in this business, uh, it's very, very capital intensive. And, 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 um, and so you've got to be creative. You've got to look at as many different ways to, to generate revenues as you possibly can. And, and so with all of those changes with, uh, months and months of interviews with local industry and asking them, what do you need out of our graduates? What's changed at your winery? What's changed at your distillery or your brewery? What are you looking for that we weren't giving you previously? Um, we, we have a professional advisory committee that we meet with at least twice a year and we get their feedback and they are winery owners and brewery and distillery owners and they are uh, sales agency owners. 
and executives, et cetera. And so they're living and breathing the industry every day. And they know exactly what the industry, how it's changing and evolving and what the new set of needs are. So we were able to get a lot of good feedback and we decided let's move into the 22nd century and say, while wine still is a very important core part of this program, we, it's obvious that we need to start looking broader and we need to start considering the needs, the business needs of the distillers and of the brewers out there as well. So we created beverage business management. So it is a bit of a jack of all trades. It's an introduction for those of you who are on the call and thank you for taking time out of your Saturday to be here. Or if you're not here today and you see this presentation later on, thank you for considering Niagara College and for considering one of our, our great beverage programs. Um, maybe you don't know exactly what you want to do, but you know you like booze. Uh, maybe you like uh, the industry, or maybe you like to drink, or maybe you think there's an opportunity to produce down the road, or maybe it's something else specifically, but you're not yet sure. Well, this program is great for you, because what this program will do is give you a really good sense from a broad overview of many different aspects of all of these beverage alcohol products. Um, so we don't make you a specialist in any one way. We give you a taste to sort of dipping your toe in a lot of different pools. So at the end of that, even though you come out really uh, well-rounded with a very solid, comprehensive sort of understanding of many aspects of the business, you're not a specialist yet. You're not an expert yet, but you probably know where you wanna go with your career. So. That's one, that's what we've really been trying to appeal. And because we have these production programs already on campus, then if you decide in the end that you want to get into production specifically, that making the stuff is what really lights your fire, then you don't have to travel very far. You just have to register for another one of our fantastic programs at the college and, and expand your, uh, your knowledge that way. Next slide. Um, yeah, that's me. Not too long ago, although it does look as though I've maybe put a little weight on, perhaps grew a little hair. Um, I've come to the business with, oh, geez, it's approaching. If you go right back to the early days of waiting tables and washing dishes, it's pretty darn close to 40 years now. Um, and many different aspects of the business. I mean, I'm a certified sommelier. And so the sensory side is really very dear to my heart, near and dear to my heart. Um, but, you know, I've worked as a consultant for wineries, both in British Columbia and in Ontario. I spent many, many years in hospitality in both hotels and restaurants. Um, I've worked, managed sales agencies in Ontario uh, as well and worked as a trade development manager for a large BC winery. So seen the business from a lot of different points of view um, and uh, just love that we were able to create this program that taps into so many different aspects of the business. All of us, all of the teachers here, um, and there's just a short list of some of, of our core teachers, Andrea, who you've just met, and Sonia, who you've met, will be teaching you regulatory. Andrea is our sales and marketing whiz. Adrian will be talking to you um, about uh, entrepreneurship in the beverage alcohol industry if you decided to try to venture out on your own rather than joining an existing company. Maybe you've got the capital or you've got the family or you've got the friends or the financial support to be able to uh, initiate your own product and your own concept and your own experiential, experiential um, you know, type facility. Uh, we want to make sure that you get a taste of that. What does that involve? What are the, 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 the risks associated with that? What are the opportunities associated with that? How do you set yourself up for success? What is a business plan? What is a lean canvas, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But we also have a lot of great part-time teachers that come directly to us from industry. Um, you know, just to name a few, I've written a few down here as I'm sitting. Uh, Tim Coons uh, is currently teaching um, with us right now in the fall semester. And he is the estate manager of two very notable wineries in Ontario. Uh, Wayne Gretzky Estates and Trias Winery. So he's seeing the wine business at a very high executive level and knows exactly what it takes to be successful, whether it's the human resources side of things. And that's part of what he's teaching is HR. Part of what he's teaching is financial sustainability. So he's looking at both the money and the people side of things. Um, and he's got loads and loads of experience with that. And obviously and comes to us with a, an MBA as well. Um, 
Richard uh, uh, Richard Kingdon will be teaching uh, in the winter semester, and he's got over 30 years in the supply chain management business. So he he's going to be vitally important. I mean, all the teachers are important, but when you think about the impact that COVID's had uh, and the changing landscape of beverage alcohol, um, and the, the the challenges that so many aspects of the supply chain have faced, it's really great to have somebody with more than 30 years of experience to talk about, you know, when it's working, what does it look like? And when you're faced with these kind of challenges, what does it look like? Whether it's, you know, shortages of, of packing materials or it's uh, uh, lead times on raw materials for production, or maybe it's just delays in getting labels together, um, or possibly it's some of the challenges you face along the chain, um, you know, and uh, and how you can how you can address those challenges, and and when does it make sense to diversify? When does it make sense to uh, integrate up or down the chain, et cetera? So it really gives you a great industry overview of, of beer, wine, spirits, cider, ready to drink beverages, hard seltzers, et cetera. You're going to see the story from all these. Stuff. There's just a couple. Um, uh, Louise Wilson, one of only uh, a, a very small handful of masters of wine on the planet is one of your uh, teacher slash mentors as well. She'll be walking you through the Capstone Project, which we'll talk about in a minute. So we're so privileged to have her expertise and her international connections uh, that she brings to the classroom as well. Next slide. You know what? Uh, is it easy for me to wave the Niagara College flag, the, the Canadian Food and Wine Institute flag, the, the Niagara and the Lake Campus flag? Absolutely, I think we're all so, so, grateful to be working here. It's just an incredible facility. And if I go way, way back to the 80s, uh, 1985, when I started university um, at University of Guelph, and then more recently finished my master of, uh, Master's of Education at Queen's University, the venue is important. The place that you go to school is important. Whether it's the, the place that you have a beer at the end of a busy day of, of academia, or it's the support networks that are in place, the faculty, uh, where do I go if I'm struggling with mental health? Where do I go if um, if I need tutoring or I need support? Where do I go if I want help building a video uh, or I need access to resources? All of that's here. And it's, you know, I would say in the seven going on eight years I've been here full time, I think maybe the thing this college has done better than anything else is to ensure that all of the supports are in place for our students. You know, that obviously they're hiring great people to do the work, the, the industry experts, the subject matter experts. But beyond that, the facility itself has got to work for the students. They've got to know where they can go to get the support they need. They've got to feel comfortable. They've got to feel like it's fun. You know, uh, they've got to feel like it's innovative and that it's trendsetting and it's keeping up with, with the competition, wherever that competition is. And frankly, there isn't a whole lot of competition when you think of the full range of products that we offer when it comes to beverage alcohol. So, you know, easy for me to wave that flag. If I could do it all over again, I would very seriously consider not going to University of Guelph, even though I love that experience and that's a beautiful campus and a great town. Uh, but if I was going the college route, I think Niagara College would be absolutely the top of my list. And that's not me speaking as an employee here. That is literally me speaking when I see the caliber of education that we're offering and just um, the student feedback we get. Next slide. I, I won't go through the detail. I think these are essentially self-explanatory, but as, as Andrea and Sonia pointed out earlier, this is not a one-year program. This is an eight-month program. We have an intensive fall semester. We give you some time to open your Christmas gifts and eat way too much turkey and, and dark fruitcake and, and English trifle, if you're like me. And then we bring you back and we throw you right back into the fire with five more courses. Now, this is a total of 10 courses, 42 credits. It's actually a little bit more focused and streamlined than the wine business management used to be. In the wine business management, you had seven or eight courses per semester. So you were really being spread fairly thin, like not enough butter on a piece of toast. You know, we were really spreading you thin. And what we decided, and this is a big part of what our PAC was telling us and also our student feedback, and our overall program reviews that we had within the last couple of years, that while we do want to introduce you to a lot of subjects, 
we don't want it to be so many subjects that you don't feel like you're really getting enough of a taste of any of them. So we, we distilled it down, sorry, Andrew, to use the analogy. We distilled it down to 10 courses so that you would going a little bit deeper and almost getting a sense of a bit more mastery in each of these subjects uh, while we were still trying to make you a jack of all trades and give you a really good taste of what the full breadth and depth of the industry is so you can find your passion and you can find your best path forward. I'm really excited. Uh, you know, I don't think I've said this, but this is the first year that we're in the midst of with beverage business. Um, so you guys that are on the call here are very smart. You know, a lot of people will say, don't buy the brand new model of the of the Mitsubishi electric car until it's been, you know, it's been out for a year and they've been able to find what the kinks are and they've been able to fix it and make it better. Buy it in the second year. Always the best time to buy a new product. Well, if that's in fact the case, then your timing is perfect because we will be through one year and all of us as a team are really getting a great sense of what's working well and what we need to refine and what we need to shift hours and where we need to shift experiences and how we can enhance everything. Now, I think to a person, we're really proud of what we put together. It took us three years to put this program together, um, but nobody gets it perfect the first time. In fact, perfection is something that we'll perpetually quest after, but I'm really, really excited about uh, the feedback we're getting and some of the refinements that we're already putting into place for the second half of the first semester and what, we'll, what we've learned from the first semester, what we can do better in the second semester, and then ultimately, um, what will push forward until the next intake, some of you, hopefully, and, and how much better the program will be. Having said all that, I'm really excited about the capstone. The capstone for the students this year is literally to, um, to work in groups, to, to propose a brand new product for our retail distillery, our commercial distillery, our commercial brewery, or our commercial winery. And if there's an opportunity for a hybrid product that could cross over, then we're open to that. But you basically have to come up with the concept and you have to come up with the business plan or the lean canvas that will demonstrate the viability of your idea. Who is your market? Uh, have you done an industry analysis, a trend analysis? Have you done a SWOT analysis? Do you know exactly why you're certain this product is what the market needs so that you can feel confident in the sales? Have you looked at your production plan? Have you looked at your costing uh, and your financial uh, outlook and your ROI down the road? And all of these things have to come together and you make a proposal to an actual industry partner. And our industry partner this time is our commercial winery, our commercial brewery, and our commercial distillery, which is overseen by Steve Gill, who's basically the general manager for all of our learning enterprise corporation, which is all of these facilities and others. You're gonna pitch it to him. Um, and he's going to decide whether this is something that he thinks would be really good for his commercial operation. And if he does believe in it enough, it'll happen. And that product, however long it takes for that concept to be turned into reality, uh, will be actually on the shelves of our retail store at some point after. Um, we're, we're, we've got the graphic arts team to come in and design team to work with your groups as well so that you've got graphic and design and label and packaging experts to work with you. So we're doing this beautiful crossover between programs at the college to ensure that you've got all the expertise you need beyond you know, the support you'll get from Louise, uh, the MW, uh, and uh, all of the rest of your faculty that'll be kind of guiding you along the way. So very excited about the capstone. Not sure what it'll look like for next year, but we will live um, the experience and we will uh, learn from that experience and we will decide what the next might look like. So we're going to go back to a guest speaker that you already heard from. Uh, we're in a very unique position to have Emma, who is not only a graduate of Artisan Distilling, but a brand new student in beverage business management. So Emma, I think you have the talking points. I don't need to prompt you. Uh, okay. Why did you decide to join beverage business management and talk to you a little, a little bit about the difference between the two programs? For sure. Thanks, Peter. Um, so in my time at Niagara College doing distilling, actually, I uh, there was a, a press release or I saw it on Instagram or it came to my attention somehow that um, the beverage business management program was going to be 
starting up for the first time in September. And the only way that I could really see it was that it was a sign that I needed to do that. Um, you know, I don't really have a lot of experience with the business aspect of any type of thing, really, to be honest. But it's been um, an amazing opportunity to be a part of the very first cohort for BBM. And it's been a phenomenal experience. Um, I love being able to learn about wine, beer, and spirits and the differentiations between the three categories, be it in uh, legal with Sonia or just in how you taste them and analyze them. And I really think that by taking these two programs back to back, it's given me an opportunity to really expand uh, my knowledge. And um, I feel that upon graduation in April, I'm going to like, I will be very well prepared for whatever next step I choose to take. Fantastic. And do you, do you find there's much overlap or is there more complement and sort of building on some of the principles you learned with the introduction to business and artisan distilling? And, and then we're kind of building on those and introducing some new, new concepts as well that you didn't even really get a chance to study in, in your first year. Um, it's definitely uh, a bit of both. Uh, there's been overlap, obviously, with the spirits and distilling and um, things like that. But a lot of other topics, like you mentioned, with the uh, business side of it have been uh, expanded on more and uh, touched on a little bit more in depth. And um, it's been a really great way to further that knowledge and um, be able to apply it. Awesome. Well, I, um, congratulations for being half, almost, well, I guess we're a little over a quarter way through <laughs> the first go round of beverage business management. And I can't wait to see all of that hard work you've put in over two years, uh, what will be two years when you graduate, turn into a great job and success in the industry. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, Emma. All right, next slide. Where'd my Mavis go? Okay, now uh, to complement what Emma said, we decided we would get somebody who didn't do artisan distilling, who hasn't been associated with Niagara College at all. Um, some fresh blood who's just arrived with an entirely different background and maybe is seeing this program from a slightly different point of view. Raina, tell us a little bit about your experience with beverage business management. Hello, everyone. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Perfect. Um, so I did graduate from the culinary program at Niagara College last year. So my experience is completely different, not business rooted, not alcohol rooted. The only thing that I kind of did previously, they're related. I did some wine sensory, but it was strictly wine, Ontario wine, pretty much nothing else. So I was originally going to go into baking after culinary. That was my next step. And then I saw this program and I was thinking to myself, you know, baking is just kind of something for fun, but this is something that I could really learn and really make myself a more well-rounded person in the industry. I know the backhand side and now I can kind of know the front hand and the management side more. Um, so when I saw this program being released, it was kind of the same thing as Emma said, kind of like, I think I should go in this direction and it kind of clicked for me. Um, so far, it is one of the most influential courses and things I've taken in school overall. It's making me really open-minded to all the different aspects and you kind of, before being in this program, there's a lot that I did not know and it's so interesting to learn. It's really, really opened my mind. I don't know if you can see here, but I pretty much taste alcohol once two times a week outside of class and I'm evaluating everything and thinking how I can make it into a spirit cocktail or I could uh, put it in a recipe kind of thing. It's really opening my mind to it all. Uh, we get to go on class trips a few times. That's been really fun. Everything we're learning is is really really, really interesting. And I think if you don't have any background in it, don't be scared because I was definitely scared going into it because I just know food and it's definitely, you can still go into it and you still learn a lot and it, it's still a pretty good course depending on your background for sure. 
Well, you know what? The thing I love about what you bring, uh, two things. One is there's all kinds of combinations that can be that can be uh, beneficial to a future. And, and it makes so much sense to take a strong culinary background and combine it with a beverage alcohol background because who knows what kind of magical entrepreneurship ideas you can get out of that. You will become somebody with a rare set of talents. You know, there aren't gonna be so, so many that maybe have that unique combination, the business side of beverage alcohol and the hands-on side of the culinary world, right? So it, it seems to me like you've made a really good decision the other thing I'd like to say, and I think Raina knows this, is uh, we've been together now 10 weeks. And, you know, the level of confidence that I've seen is amazing. That uh, you were nervous when you first came in. And I, I can tell it was the nature of your questions. It was even, even to some degree, um, the work that you were doing. And you, the progress you've made is extraordinary. The confidence that you now emulate is, is really something to behold. And we're only 10 weeks in. And that speaks to two things. One, it's your commitment as a student to wanting to be successful and to taking it very seriously, first and foremost. And then hopefully a little bit about the support network that's here and the fact that we do care about our students, that we want to see you make that progress because we do want that graduate to be successful and confident and ready to sort of take the whatever aspect of the beverage alcohol slash culinary industry you know, take a hold of it and do something really special with it. So keep up the good work. Thank you for coming in, giving us some insight today. Always great to hear from the students. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think we're just approaching wrap up here, but you know, it's always the top of people's minds. Where do your graduates go? Well, I can't speak to you yet about graduates of beverage business management, because as you've just uh, been told, this is the very first year of it. But I can just give you a really brief overview of, of some of our uh, many, many, many graduates from the Wine Business Management Program and where they've ended up. And I literally just put a list together to try to show you there's so many different aspects of the business that our graduates get involved with. And I don't imagine it's going to be any different with the cohort that we have in beverage alcohol, where we're literally uh, going to be feeding a number of beverage alcohol industries rather than just the wine one. But you know, you can read this on your own. You can see that Annie, who graduated, uh, I want to say probably eight or nine years ago, uh, is working with Wine Australia. Uh, Jeff Letvinek, who was in our very first, uh, very first year, uh, first first graduating class, has been with Pilateria Pilater State Winery from day one. And that job, uh, which is now 15 years ago, came to him. Um, because of his capstone project, because he was working with Pilateri for his capstone project. They were impressed with the work he did. They hired him uh, after he graduated and he slowly made his way um, up and up the line and up the chain into a, a very important uh, senior management position. So, uh, you know, Chetan is over at our Niagara College Winery, an amazing international student who came from India, who's done really wonderful work and has really reinvented the retail experience at the winery. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. As you can see, as, as I say, you can read on your own just how diverse and interesting um, this mix is. We've really got people going to so many different aspects of the business and we're so proud of our graduates. And as I say, this is just a, the tip of the iceberg. So that is pretty much the beverage, uh, the, uh, the beverage business management program in a nutshell. Um, and I do, uh, I do hope that you'll take the time to, uh, to contact me. Uh, I think we're gonna provide you with my email address. If not, I'm gonna put it in the chat uh, because I certainly wanna be here to answer any questions you may have after this, uh, this, this session is completed. And I really do hope we'll see you in the hallways in Niagara College in September of next year. Thank you for being a part of this. Yes, thank you. Th and thank you so much, Peter. Um, I do want to encourage you guys, if you have any questions at all, now's a great time to put them in the chat and we'll be able to an answer those live for you. Um, but if you're not quite ready to answer those questions yet, I am going to share uh, my email in the chat as well. So feel free to take that down and I will make sure that you get um, into the right hands there. The last call for any 
um, questions. I know Peter also shared his email there as well. So feel free to email both of us. I'm more than happy to connect with you. I think also, maybe I just have one thing to add about the BBM program. And uh, absolutely. It's, <laughs> you know what? As somebody who went through the Wine and Bit program, I thought about going through the Wine Business Management program instead. And it wasn't exactly what I wanted. And now I'm, I'm kind of jealous that this is an opportunity that the students get because it is such an incredible opportunity that it, the, the industry needed it. The industry truly needed something where you could go and learn about all these different aspects, whether it be wine, beer, or spirits. So I'm just, I'm really excited to be part of it. And I'm already wildly impressed with the, the quality of the content that I'm getting back from students. And I can already see the students minds changing in the way they think about you know sales and marketing and i'm very proud about that so um just a little tidbit for me about the bbm program <laughs> yes and you know thanks for adding that we do have a couple of seconds and if we get questions we'll jump straight into them but one of the other th things i wanted to add and i think you touched on this sonia a little bit is the the amazing diversity um that um that we see in these programs, these graduate certificate programs. I just love it. And I, 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 I can only speak for myself, but um, with, the, with the years of experience at the college, after you know, teaching through the Sommelier Guild and various other uh, opportunities before I joined the college full-time, combined with the Masters of Education, I've really, really made it a, a priority to find ways to ensure that all of our students with all of their cultural backgrounds and all of their um, uh, idiosyncrasies and their fears and their strengths and their passions that we find a way to get them together to share that opportunity. And this year, I would say more than any other year in the past, uh, I've been just so impressed with how collegial everybody's been, how willing they are to work together, how the friendships have formed, how they're kind of like, we're all in this together, you know, all ships rise on the same ocean. and. And uh, it just, it warms my heart to see that the students are not seeing this as a competition, that there's only one job out there after graduation. So I have to be the best student and I'm gonna keep secrets. And it's been the exact opposite that there's plenty of jobs out there uh, and we can all get one. And if we help each other in a more collective manner than a sort of individualistic one, uh, we're all gonna benefit. And I, I don't know about you, Andrea, but I've seen that and I love it. And I, I really wanna to continue to invest time and energy into making sure we maximize that. Oh, for sure. It's, it's really cool. And I also hope to see this, the impact in the future in the next few years. So this is, this is your opportunity to you know, be one of the first, first graduating classes in this unique program and, and you know, use those skills and make an impact. Like we're already seeing in distilling in a few years, we're gonna see the same thing in business beverage management. And, uh, you know, maybe you go here and you find that you love brewing and then afterwards you take another brewing course or do like Emma and you take distilling, but the sky is really the limit. And I've heard from so many people in the industry who are now like top of the field saying, I wish this existed when I was younger. So it's a, it's a really cool program, but not only that, the caliber of the, the professors, you know, with, working with NWs in Canada, that's a rare thing. You get to do that. So uh, take advantage of it. We hope to see you here whether it's in January, no, sorry, in the fall of next year. Um, and uh, I'm sure Sonia hopes to see you in our classroom and Peter as well. So yeah, yeah just a few things for me. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, I think that concludes the formal presentation for today. Um, thank you so much for joining us. You do have about 20 minutes left if you would like to connect with student services. Um, so feel fr free to do that on the regular landing page. Uh, but thank you so much for joining us. And on behalf of Niagara College, I hope you guys have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Take care. Bye. See you soon. Bye, Bye everyone. Thank you.